we just approached the man who calls himself Chicken. We wanted to know about his controversial new business venture, but things quickly escalated. How do you actually create skin brightening for somebody? Oh, oh Rick. Rick, sorry. Hello, I'm Paul Barry. Welcome to Media Watch and to an important lesson in handling the media and what not to do if you're being chased by a reporter. In this case, a current affairs, Seb Costello. Nixon's big hit, his elbow slamming into my jaw, the former AFL player and player agent with a fixed glare in the moments that follow. Nixon retreats into a bank where he looks quite pleased with himself before appearing to call police. South Melbourne Police. And so began 15 minutes of high drama, all caught on camera and packaged up for TikTok, where it's clocked up more than 700,000 views. And for Nine's older viewers at home... Rick, I think if the police are going to attend, maybe we have a complaint to make as well, Rick. The only drip I know is you get out of my way. Hey, Ricky, Ricky, don't touch her, mate. Don't touch her. The Red Door is Nixon's apartment in Port Melbourne. And why were Nine's Costello and Seven's Tegan Dolling staking it out? Because of this Herald Sun story that morning. Nixon's infusions needle doctors. Ricky Nixon has been slammed by doctors for pushing unproven intravenous infusion treatments to vulnerable Victorians. And not only unproven, but pricey. Charging $350 a hit for... Those who want a totally revitalised life and feel. And from a look at his media scuffle on Bay Street, Port Melbourne, Nixon could do with a revitalising injection himself. Get real, Ricky. Why are you insulting the media, Ricky, when we just want to talk oh, to you about the media. Oh. Oh. And with that, Nixon was gone and Costello was calling into Radio 3AW for a regular chat. And giving them all the hot news about his clash with Nixon. So I'm in a bit of shock at the moment. Um... Yeah, what I'm about to share with you it, it, it happened just about three minutes ago. And while Costello readily admitted these encounters can be tense... You know, we, we go into these situations, obviously, you know, asking questions and cameras rolling, so I, I can appreciate um, how that's a provocative situation. He was soon face-to-face -face with Nixon again. Indeed, Mr Nixon's just approaching me now. Oh, OK. Um, Mr Nixon, calm down. This time, it was the hunted doing the hunting, with radio listeners getting all the action live. And the current affair cameras filming the whole thing. Mr Nixon, I'm just calm down. Don't be stopping. I'm going to speak I'm, to you. I will speak to you. I'm, I'm live on Prayer W right now. OK. Can you not? Please, please. OK. We can de-escalate it, but you need to move out of my space, please. Hang up and hey, do it now. What's that? Do it now. Mr Nixon, we're not going to do something... Well, you, you just said. invaded my privacy. Of course, the media love confrontation. The best tabloid TV moments are built upon it. And while Seb Costello was no doubt keen to ask legitimate questions of Nixon, it was the elbow in the jaw that made it a blockbuster. Not only for ACA, but also for Seven News. Ricky Nixon lashing out over questions on his latest business. Oh, 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 sorry. Ricky. Ricky. Rick, sorry. Mate, that's sorry, not acceptable. You've turned around, you got it's... in the way. It's an old saying that all publicity is good publicity, but it's actually not true. Ricky's IV business was dead in the water that night, with the company providing the treatment, telling Seven News... It won't be proceeding with the partnership. It's severing all ties with the former player's agent. So, was that the end of the story? Of course not. With reporters back on the scene next morning for live updates on Ricky's rampage. Chris, good morning. A police report has been filed. That's right, Alex. I have spoken to Seb this morning and he says he has now filed that police report. This after that ugly confrontation. So, take it from us. If you're being chased by the media, stop, talk and smile. Or just walk away. Because if you strike out on camera, you'll be making headlines for all the wrong reasons and you'll lose the fight. And now, to a list you didn't know you needed. New South Wales prison deaths. The most high profile and shocking deaths in New South Wales prisons have been revealed. Yes, read all about it. How five men met their untidy end behind bars. From a rapist described as the devil to murderous malat and a series of shocking medical crises under the spotlight. Murderous malat needs no introduction. He's one of Australia's most notorious serial killers. The child rapist was Mustafa Kairici, whom the News Corp network farewelled with... The devil is dead! But the other three had no such notoriety. 
Kenyan man Dicta Dongren was fresh into custody when he died in a medical holding room this year. And the other two men were young, indigenous and largely unknown. So, what was the thread that bound them all together? Quite frankly, there wasn't one. Milat and the rapist died of cancer, Dongrin died of unknown causes, and 20-year-old Bailey McCander fell to his death after vaulting a hospital wall. The inmate fell a shocking eight metres while handcuffed and ankle shackled. Milat was, of course, the key to selling the story around the News Corp network. But how would you feel if your son was sharing a page with him? Well, you'd be fuming. And Bailey McCander's mother certainly was. When she saw her boy lumped in with a serial killer, she tried to get News Corp to remove him, but got no response. She told Media Watch... I do not consider that reporting on Bailey's death in this way and in this context serves the public interest. My son's memory has been tarnished by sensationalist reporting and reckless misuse of his image. But not only did News Corp offend by putting Bailey in its clickbait listicle, it also raced over a story that did have a point and a thread running through it. Bailey was on remand when he died in 2019, battling drug addiction and an anxiety disorder. And an inquest found he was placed in a protection cell without access to open air, telephone calls or psychological support. New South Wales Deputy State Coroner wept as she read her finding. It was a tragic last few days of a young man who was really still a boy. There were also failures to be noted in the death of 25-year-old Danny Whitten. Paracetamol poisoning sparked multiple organ failures. And while News Corp acknowledged that the coroner had criticised prison authorities, finding... His deterioration was not appropriately actioned in a timely manner due to overall suboptimal care. It did not expand on that or dig any deeper. All it did manage to do, once again, was upset Danny's mother, Kylie, who told Media Watch... It made my skin crawl. This just brings back more pain. It's like they're poking at us, trying to provoke us. Do they even realise what they've done? Well, News Corp certainly did know its list was upsetting some readers because originally there was a third Indigenous man in the article, Nathan Reynolds, whose sister complained and got his story removed. And how do we know? Because while he was no longer on the News Corp list, his picture and name was still there, alongside Milat's on more than a dozen News Corp social media accounts. And it's worth noting there were lessons to be learned from Nathan's death too. As the ABC reported last year, he died after an asthma attack, following a response that the inquest described as confused, unreasonably delayed and uncoordinated. Once again, an opportunity to dig deeper was missed by News Corp. And there was another unhappy family. Nathan's sister told me to watch... My colleagues were angry, my family was angry. So, if News Corp at least did take Nathan out of the list, how come the others remained? News Corp explained... The additional name she referred to was supposed to have been removed from that article after the issue was highlighted to us. But that did not occur due to a production error in our team. That will now occur. Sure enough, the list of six is now just three. But maybe News Corp should scrap it altogether and explore instead why the three young Indigenous men died in custody and whether their deaths could have been prevented. The coroner certainly appears to believe that they could. But now to Seven's Gold Coast News, where too much real estate is never enough. Well, if you thought property prices were going to drop, think again. A third generation family of developers is gearing up for what it calls a golden decade. As the skyline of the Gold Coast grew, the Nikiforides brothers watched their forebears shape the coast of today. Now they are playing a part in shaping the future. Seven's exclusive special report on that Gold Coast property developer was no more than a massive ad dressed up as news for the nightly bulletin. And it was heroic stuff. The 50-storey Oracle Tower in Broadbeach is their father's most visible accomplishment. But the sons are working on the new trend driven by the population growth that is also keeping prices up. Seven's story treated us to interviews, or was it a pitch, from all of the brothers and a look at their latest project their Ventura residences at Mermaid Beach. Complete with a tour of the apartments in case anyone wanted to buy. And if you're thinking the images look a bit glossy for a news report, you would be right, because almost all come from the group's website. So why was this in the news bulletin? Plenty of viewers were asking that question. News? It looks like property ads. Well, this feels so much like a paid ad rather than news. Third developer infomercial you have dressed up as news today. 
But there was one positive comment on Facebook saying... Thank you to Steve Titmus and Seven News Gold Coast for their exclusive insight into the evolving Nikifaridi's legacy of Gold Coast development. You can check out the full story below. And who was so grateful? Yes, the developer's PR team at Media Hunt Communications. Not such a good look. But it's not only Seven flogging property in their Gold Coast news bulletin. Nine is doing it too. The 37-storey Masthead Ocean Club will feature 28 apartments, each with their very own floor and amenities galore. Dedicated whisky room, cigar rooms, um, lounge areas, fully caterers kitchen, um, two-storey library, um, wine club, just to name a few things. If that wasn't enticing enough, buyers receive an electric BMW with their purchase, which alone would be worth around $100,000. And, naturally, the developer's PR company was again as pleased as Punch, posting... A big thank you to Nine News Gold Coast. And last week, the agent in that report was back, selling more beachside luxury, and Nine's reporter was only too happy to help. Seclusion, a sleek residential apartment block, glamorous one, two and three bedroom residences, some tipped to fetch a whopping $2.3 million. They've been here for seven years sharing a lot of memories and now they want to be able to let others enjoy those um, good times so close to the beach. And what did the PR firm think of that? You guessed it, sensational story on Nine News. And of course there are plenty more property stories where those came from. We counted 14 on 7 and 9 in the last two weeks alone. So, why do they do it? 7 and 9 tell us there's no commercial or financial arrangement, so we guess it's because it fills a hole in the local bulletin and it's easier than going out and finding some real news. And uh, talking of real news, you'd be hard-pressed to find anything more important than this story, which has had Sydney media outlets in a state of high excitement and deep concern. A Bondi vet has come under fire for accidentally handing over a cat to the wrong client. Bondi Junction Veterinary Hospital gave tortoiseshell cat Tara to a family who came to pick up their tortoiseshell cat, Lara. In a terrible mistake, a Bondi vet handed Tara the cat to the owner of Lara the cat. Yes, the Bondi cat catastrophe made headline news on TV and in print. And with Sydney pet lovers on high alert, a current affair set out to explain the full Tara Lara saga. Tara and a similar looking cat called Lara were both being looked after by the same vet. Lara was discharged and her owner sent a family member to pick her up on her behalf. She was mistakenly given Tara instead of Lara. Lara's owner realised Lara was Tara, but it was too late. Tara escaped. Got it? Two tortoiseshell cats with similar names got mixed up. And soon, Nine's investigative reporter was bravely leading the search. Seen Tara? Barista, have you seen Tara? Keep an eye out for Tara. Barging into the vet hospital uninvited and bailing up the unwitting catnappers in traditional tabloid style. And have you spoken with Tara's owners? No. Okay, have you got Lara now? I have Lara. They even papped the lucky cat that hadn't gone missing. We spotted Lara munching on a snack in the front yard. Safe and sound. But after warning people... Don't get it confused with Lara. ACA did just that. A neighbour let the cat out of the bag, emailing us to say... The cat shown, identified by ACA as Lara, is our cat, Bug, a black cat. Whoops. But nice to know that someone, well, actually almost everyone, is there to cover the stories that really matter. And that's all from us for tonight. There's more on the website where you can stream and download the program. And don't forget Media Bites every Thursday. But for now, good night. <laughs>